Well, everybody, November is in the books, so here are all the games that I beat for November. first game that I beat for November was Guilty Gear X Advanced Edition. I like the Guilty Gear port to the GBA. It was good. Uh, I recommend it to anybody because of the fact that they use the directional pad correctly and the triggers. So if you're into fighters and you're worried about the combos and stuff like that, how to like, translate to a handheld, they did a good job. The story was good. I liked the story and I liked the ending. They gave you a good ending. And not only that, they also gave you some cheesy one-liners that the fighters did towards each other. And guess what? There's a game character named Dizzy! I keep getting blessed with characters named Dizzy, so... <laughs> Definitely try this one for sure. The second game on the list was Saints Row Cat Out of Hell. Started this game last month on October and needed to finish it off, so I just went through and made sure that I finished off the missions. It's repetitive. Um, it's technically more of a DLC than it is a game, in my opinion, because you finish off the story from where you left off when you were in the ship for the second, well, the fourth game. I mean, the fourth game has you in the ship and you're trying to get through the story. So basically, you find out that the boss is being stolen by the Satan to have him marry his daughter. And the daughter is basically not really wanting to get married. So you have to be Johnny Gap and Kenzie and go find the boss and stop Satan's plan. You meet up with all four characters that are from history or from Saints Row history. And you get a power or a weapon from them and then you use that to battle Satan at the very end. I recommend it to anybody who really likes Saints Row. Uh, for everybody else, Play the main story, don't worry about all the side missions, don't worry about clearing the map. It gets repetitive and boring, and with all the powers and everything like that, everything's easy. So, I just recommend. Enjoy the story, enjoy the musical. I was shocked when I first played this game back way back in the day. It is a musical. <laughs> There's a lot of singing in this. I didn't expect that. Not everybody's a great singer, so kind of hit or miss. Some people don't sing very well, <laughs> but I did enjoy having the boss and everybody sing, so recommend to anybody who is into musicals or Saints Row. Then I went back to a fighter and that is Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution. It's a good fighter. I recommend it to anybody who is into fighters. Virtual Fighter hasn't changed their chemistry or their formula in forever, but it doesn't matter. I like it. It's a uh, mechanics where you have to know how to block, when to block, and if you fall down, it really is not good. It's like getting juggled in Tekken. And basically you have all these characters that are from the past and their story keeps progressing. So I recommend to play this if you have it. If you don't have it on PS2, I know for sure you can find it on emulation and it's a good uh, time. They have a good story and the endings are great. I uh, like endings that are good in fighters. I keep complaining but it's sad when you only get uh, thanks for playing every time you play a fighter. So recommend this. The next game is an FMV game and it's an indie game so it's not terribly expensive. <laughs> the reason why I say this is because there's a lot of bad acting in this game. A lot of bad acting but there's a lot of funny stuff and hilarious parts to it so you pretty much are a character who is a youtuber slash entertainer on the internet and you decide to join the battle royale and you think, oh, I could tap out at any point if I get shot or hurt, I'm okay. But they change up the rules last minute while you're on the plane. And they say to you, hey, everybody, guess what? It is to the death, just like real Hunger Games. And if you don't make it, oh, well, like, uh, good luck. And so they send you out and you can win a chance to win tons and tons of money. But now you have ex-convicts running around, not only entertainers, so... I enjoy this. It was a good fun time. I'm glad it's cheap. So if you see it online, it's about $15, $20. Not that bad. So enjoy the story, but don't pay a lot for it. Next is a horror game that I also started back in October and needed to finish for the next month. So it's Amnesia Rebirth. Amnesia Rebirth is just like all the other Amnesia games. You're walking around, you have lost your memory, you don't know what's going on. 
but you find out throughout the story that you are a woman who was going to a site to dig up some artifacts and during that flight out there, your plane catches on fire and you crash. You have to find out what happened to all your party, your husband, and to yourself because you find out throughout the time that there's a lot of stuff going on. So you have to go through and you start meeting all these creatures and they kind of look like humanoids, kind of like the descent again where everybody looks kind of human but not, and you find out throughout your time the story that is kind of weird and not very scary in my opinion. Um, so for those who don't know, it's got some moments where there's jump scares and different things like that, but the only time that I really got frustrated was the maze part, uh, for anybody who doesn't know. There is a maze in the game and it really pissed me off. <laughs> I didn't like it, so... I had a lot of people who saw mixed reviews on that, and it was just because of the jump scares and different things, but I liked it. I didn't mind the jump scares. Um, there was only a couple times that I went, oh crap, I died, and then I went, oh, they let me go. Cool. So just maintain your fear and keep yourself in the light, and you'll be okay. After that, I played it a shooter, and it was Halo Reach. Now, technically, Halo Reach is in my backlog. I did have it for the Xbox 360. And at one time I sold it because I needed some money and I figured might as well do it before it went on Game Pass. And then it did go on Game Pass, so I picked it up with the Halo Master Chief Collection and I played it. I do enjoy the story. Um, you are a group of people that are helping get all of the stuff that needs to be done in the war to where it needs to go. So technically you're kind of like side character people. And your mission is to help this group out, get this point A, destroy these towers, destroy that for the enemies to be not able to do what they need to do so that we can get everybody out. I enjoyed it. Get the civilians where they need to go. It was a good time. I enjoyed the game. Um, I recommend anybody who likes Halo and is debating about Halo Reach, try it out. I like the shooter, like the story wasn't too difficult. Um, There's a lot of Halo games that I couldn't really get into just for the mechanics. It was a little wonky in my opinion, but this one was a good one. The next game is called Escape Academy. This one was also in my video games alphabet challenge. You are a kid who goes to escape room to find out that you are being challenged by an academy, kind of like Carmen San Diego, where you go to learn how to be a good thief. You learn how to be a good escape artist, and they use real bombs in the academy, which I was shocked. I was like, what if the kid is not great at it? You just blow it up half of the school. Kind of like Harry Potter, I guess. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. I recommend it before Game Pass takes it off of this list. Please check it out. It's definitely a hidden gem in that little mesh of games in that list. I would recommend it. Next game on the list was Ninja Gaiden or Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge, and this one was a port from the original games that were released on Nintendo Wii, uh, I think 360 and PS3, if I remember correctly. This is a good game. It's a hack and slash beat em up where you are a ninja. You're basically the brother of the original Ninja Gaiden Gaiden games. And you have to battle and get your sword and you have moments where you're not sure what to do. So you go back to Japan and you try to figure out what to do. You figure out through Japan and all the, the seeking of whatever you're trying to find out. And you eventually battle <laughs> a lot of different people who are, you thought were your friends. So I recommend it. The story is amazing. A 10 out of 10 on this one. I have played a lot of ga Ninja Gaiden games, and it's very tricky to say the name when you say it several times. And this one is a great one, so I recommend it. Definitely find it on the list if you can. We are going to play my very first GameCube game I beat, which was X-Men Dimensions. This is a fighter that is kind of like Tekken meets a bunch of other games. You pretty much are one of the X-Men and you have to battle all the evil guys or people that are through your X-Men group. And the one thing that is weird about this game is you could literally have the fighter that you're fighting go from winning to getting destroyed in five seconds because they do combos 
and the combo could like kick in with the AI and just like demolish you. I got knocked out with 33 combo that just destroyed my, my health bar in five seconds. So I recommend make sure that you learn the powers of whatever your fighter is. I had Rogue, she absorbs powers or absorbs health and basically takes it from the other characters. So I learned how to use that for Magneto at the very end. I recommend it. This fighter, you can you can go from zero to 100 in five seconds. So definitely a good fighter, just one that I don't recommend for people that are very frustrated easily. <laughs> the following game was a game that looks like Puyo Puyo Tetris. It basically is another battle game where you are battling for magical drops. The game is called Magical Drop 2. This was on the Super Nintendo online service for the Switch and I do enjoy it. Uh, it's basically a battle system. You battle every character and you have to get through. Uh, you have to be very fast with this one because the AI can kick in real fast and just destroy you. So I recommend do not wait. Just keep dropping them fast. I don't even care if you don't get a combination very good, but you will learn through about like fourth or fifth person that you battle that they are just like Tetris. It gets faster and faster and faster to the point where you're like, ah, and then also just the lines keep dropping on you. I enjoyed it. My character was hilarious. At the very end, you get to choose what you want with your magical drops. I guess you get a wish if you win the contest. And my character was like, I want clothing and they're like that's it and she's like yeah I want clothing so <laughs> I had a fun time with this story I recommend it to anybody who's into Tetris or Puyo Puyo if you've never seen this game before but I think a lot of people seen this game the next game I'm tentatively recommending just for the fact that the story is not a hundred percent nice or good or has a good warm heart fuzzy feeling to it uh, it's called Gerarda, A Flame in Winter. This is about World War II. You are a woman who is a, a nurse and your husband is trying to help overthrow Hitler. And you can have multiple things that go wrong and bad based on your decisions on what you choose to do. So I only recommend it for people that want to learn history or want to try an RPG light narrative game. Because this one, you can have moments where you're like, oh crap, that just happened. And you're like, wow. So it's a good game to play just to learn history and all the stuff that had happened in different areas in Europe. But I also recommend it for everybody who likes RPGs and narrative games that does hit you, but in a way that is going to be educational. So I tentatively recommend this one. I'm just warning you that it's not for the light of, you know, people who want a light game. It's not going to be something that you're going to be like, oh, that's really going to make my day better. Some people, it's going to make your day go, oh, we're doing that. It's kind of like um, Martha is Dead. Martha is Dead is a game that needed to be made. Gerarda, A Flame in Winter is also a game that needed to be made. But it's not for kids, it's not for people that are just going to want to pick it up and play and, and just put it down. You're going to get engulfed in the game and the story. And sometimes you're going to have moments where you're like, I need to put this down for a second. Because I just saw something that is like, whoa. So, I recommend it for everybody who wants to learn something about history in Europe. But not for everybody. Not for kids. The next game is a lighter game. It is Super Lucky's Tale. This is an homage, uh, inspiration from the 90s platforming games, the ones from PlayStation and PlayStation 2. There's a lot of nods to stuff that you've seen from platformers like Crash Bandicoot, Gex, Croc, uh, Jack. It's it's a lot of games that I'm like, oh wow, they're in there. Because the, there's Lucky and his sister. And Lucky is battling a lot of cats that are trying to take the book. So it kind of reminds you of Sly Cooper a little bit, where there's a book you have to stop the evil cats from taking the book and you have to get your pages back. And so you got a lot of stuff that reminds you of different games. And you're like, oh, that part reminds me of this and that part reminds me of that. So I recommend it. It's a fun time. 
I definitely do tell you that it's a little bit on the easier side for platforming. You're gonna blaze through this, so play the side stuff. Uh, try the puzzles. It's a lot of different things that I, I recommend because I was getting kind of bored with some of the missions and I was like, oh, let me take a minute and go learn, try the side stuff. And it has like puzzles and, and like a, a bead m moment where you have to like move the bead and like you have to twist and move the platform to get it going. So I recommend this game. Just uh, be prepared to try different things and get your uh, clovers and get your battle on. It's a fun time. Just like Halo Reach, I had another game in my backlog that I kind of sold because I didn't play it and I was like, oh, I'll just get back to it later. And I never did. So this is also technically in my backlog and this is Gears of War Judgment. It's also another game that I could see why some people said eh, because it's not really focused on the main story, main characters. You're a group of four people that are trying to do side stuff and help this team and help that team. And then you do something and you go, oopsie, I uh, I did it on it anyway. And they get tried and then they're <laughs> thrown into the court and they have to explain what happened in the middle of the court battles that are going on, which is kind of weird to me that you would be interrogating people that are part of your crew and you're still battling and there's still a war going on. I couldn't understand that, but it's a fun story. Uh, it's a good shooter. I do recommend it. And the characters are not boring. They, they actually were fun to watch. So 10 out of 10 on the story. Some of the mechanics were a little, yeah, but that was back. Here's the war. It's just like Tomb Raider. You got to figure out where you got to go. So give this one a chance. Try it out. It's not as bad as people are saying it is. And the very last game is Astro's Playroom. This is the free game that came with the PlayStation 5 or any PlayStation 5. You can download it for free. I enjoy it. It's a tech demo. Basically, you are seeing the homage to all of the PlayStation systems throughout history. You see the PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4, and all of its attachments that came along and Vita and PSP. You get to see the discs, the different things like that. And I enjoyed it so much that I platinum this game. This game is a platformer that takes a lot of homage to different other platformers, just like Super Lucky's Tale. You see the characters have to move around. You have to learn that the, the controller has motion control in it. And you move the controller up and down in different ways. And you're in a monkey suit one minute. You're in a, a cylinder suit in the next minute. And you're... A frog suit in another minute you have to learn all this stuff and figure out how they move and mechanics and there's fun stuff that I forgot about that um, we used to do when we had like uh, the 3ds where you used to use the mechanics through the the sensor where you would go to like get something to fly up in the air and I enjoyed it I had a fun time I recommend it to anybody who has a ps5 and just kind of like threw it to the side because like it's free it's actually a fun game there are different things. You will get lost in the world. You will have a good time with it. And it is one of the few games that were free that I could go back and play it again and platinum again and have a good time with it. So I just wish that they had did that for the PlayStation 4. I would have had a great time with that one too. That is all the games, everybody. I beat 14 games in total for November. That brings my total to 152 games for the year. This was a fun, a fun month. I enjoyed it. So I recommend to anybody, keep track. You will be surprised about how much you will remember a game just like everybody remembers a movie or a book. Let me know in November. Was there any games that were solid that deserve a recommendation to anybody else? You might see them in the comments and go, hey, I should check out that game. Is it on Game Pass? It is, is it online? Different things like that for us to find. Please give this video a like and please check out some other videos if you are new. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Keep on gaming and I'll catch you next video. Bye everybody. Linda the Gamer Gal She's here, she's playing games Linda the Gamer Gal She's here, she's playing games